بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. Privacy is very important in all aspects for preservation for ourselves, preservation for our family, preservation for the Ummah. And Deen has emphasized this point. Numerous ayat and numerous ahadith highlight this point. As the saying goes, without privacy, there is no point in being an individual. When your privacy is breached, then you become non-existent. So all aspects of our life, whether it's in our homes, whether it's regards to our family, this is an important part. Part of that is in our businesses as well. So when a person employs somebody, then uh, have privacy contracts, confidentiality contracts, non-disclosure contracts, where your business is yours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened up the door of risk through this avenue. So your clients, your suppliers are an amana and you need to protect us. This is intellectual property. Likewise, the trade which a person is learning, the employee who is coming is learning the skill. You have paid a lot of money to make him skillful and uh, mastery in, in this field. So many a time an employee will go on the sideline on their free time and do the exact same business. They duplicate the entire scenario or in the same breath they would set up a side structure and waiting for the time when it's right and then as they say jump ship, start an entire new structure. So the entire existence in your business is not for you, not for your benefit, but for their own benefit. So you are uh, spending on the masajid, you are spending in the path of Allah, you are spending in amal e khair as well and it could take one person that could ruin this entire structure. Yes, some people may make uh, this assumption and use this, use this foolish argument that is risk is written, so it's fine. Yes, risk is written, but foolishness is not part of that. So as a believer, we say entire our camel, then why don't you just sit at home and wait for money to fall from the sky? Why do you go out? Why do you work out if your risk is written? then why do you make effort in that direction? So why do we selectively make effort? Somebody says money grows on trees. Yes, so if money does grow on trees, then uh, there's a skill and art to grow a tree. Not everybody can be a good farmer. So there's an art of that. There's an effort behind it. There's a sacrifice behind it. So as the people of Iman, we need to make sure La yud lahul mumin. A believer is not bitten by the same hole twice. So we're supposed to take lesson, we're supposed to be vigilant. And uh, that's why the sign of a munafiq in the riwayat of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu muttafaqun ali Bukhari and Muslim ayatul munafiq thalath. There are three signs of a hypocrite. إذا حدث كذبا When he speaks, he lies. وإذا وعد أخلفا When he makes a promise, he breaks it. وإذا أتمنا خانا and when he's entrusted with something, he betrays this trust. So that employee, is he lying to you? Is he doing side business? The, 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 another business, another entity, something independent of this and it doesn't affect his work time, then it's a separate issue. Or while he is at work, in your work time, he's doing other business. That's a breach. The time which he is employed for is an amana, it's a trust. So he is speaking lies, he has made a promise not to reveal straight secrets, not to reveal information. Simple things, the business turnover, how busy you are, so generally this information leaks out also. I mean this business here, I, so, so it's, it's important that, that we, we tie our camel with regards to this. And you have entrusted him with this khana. This is Khiyana on the highest level. Hafiz ibn Rajab has mentioned uh, an important point here and he said that um, 
uh, hypocrisy is in, in uh, divided into two types and nifakul akbar a, a greater type of hypocrisy and what is that a yadhar al-insan al-iman billah wa malaika wa kutub a person definitely believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and, and Qiyamah and, and Judgment Day and whatever he needs to be doing but he in that same light he says it with the tongue but his belief in the heart is opposite so that's nifaq akbar and hada huwa nifaq alladhi kana ala ahdi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the munafiqeen outwardly said that they brought Iman in Allah and His Rasul but secretly they rejected that and these people they will be in the lowest parts of Jahannam as the ayah explains the second type of, of, of nifaq is nifaqul asghar a smaller form of hypocrisy wahua nifaqul amal and his actions are an action of a hypocrite and this is where a person does uh, actions indeed saliha. He shows good deeds and he does it for show and that is just for ostentation and pride as well so that's a second type of nifaq Other ulama have said there is another type of nifaq which is this type of nifaq where a person displays the acts of a munafiq where his actions are similar to a munafiq means outwardly his actions like speaking lies breaching a trust these are all actions of a munafiq otherwise if we go deep then the munafiqin also their qualities are that la yadhkuroon Allah illa qalila they used to make dhikr but make little bit dhikr means they did good but they never did good how it should have been done. They never fulfilled the requirements and the requisites. When they read even Salah, they perform their Salah, but they read it haphazardly, lazily, without any ambition. So we have to be very cautious and uh, we have to make sure that these qualities of, of, of hypocrisy, we do not fit the criteria. And uh, in a business as well, that's amana in a trust. So we have to look after these amanat. How a businessman is worried that nobody steals his merchandise. And he takes all the preventative measures and security measures to protect his goods, his equipment, his uh, items that are of value. Why doesn't he take protection in this light as well? Because this is also part of your uh, uh, the effort that needs needs to be done so in the hadith which has been mentioned now the the ulama have mentioned allama qurtubi hafiz ibn rajab ibn ibn hajar asqalani has said that uh, the object of here in the, this hadith is al maqsud bin nifaq huna an nifaq al amali laysa an nifaq al i'tiqadi that the hypocrisy in the hadith is those amal which are similar to a munafiq and not the one which is a'tiqadi with regards to belief. Alama Nawi has mentioned an important point also. He said that uh, reconciliation is, is uh, very important because هذه الخصال قد توجد في المسلم that this quality sometimes a Muslim, a believer is doing these actions but we will not say they are kuffar and they are disbelievers. So uh, he has mentioned that al muhaqqiqun qalu the uh, experts have mentioned inna hadhihi khisal nifaq these are just qualities of hypocrisy and the person who perpetrates this is just imitating a munafiq so privacy privacy is very important in all aspects a very very important aspect which is contravene nowadays is privacy for our wives, our daughters, our mothers, the masturat of the ummah, even the men folk, our satr nowadays, now the billah, men go and do laser, so for the satr for the male, 
uh, is from the navel to the knee. No other man can see that part of the sitter that is allowed. Likewise, um, a, a, a female can never make a massage of a male, but women do not have, and, and we'll get into those points there, but this, this, this ghayrat, you allow your husband to go for a massage to a female. That ghayrat, it's not permissible, it is not allowed. Likewise, your wife to be massaged by a male, it is haram completely. Likewise, another female, if she is Muslima, then ask the ulama, ask the muftis, for a Muslim female to another Muslim female, uh, she cannot massage her thighs, that is sitter. She cannot even look at her thighs. She cannot do laser at her thighs. And worse than that is the bikini uh, laser waxing, even worse than that. So that's all part of sitter. A husband cannot allow, it, it, he, the guna for that will be on her and his head. Both of them will be liable and answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. And the modern day prostitute ring, illa mashallah. And that's why people who go to foreign countries have to be very careful because they've legit legitimized prostitution through massage parlors. So thus, Privacy is part of deen. إِذَا خَطَبَ أَهَدُكُمْ إِمْرَى فَإِنِ اسْتَطَاءَ يَنْذُرْ إِلَى مَا يَدْعُوهُ إِلَى نِكَاهِهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ So privacy is the entire body of a female including the face. So Nabi alayhi has told and given us permission that when you want to marry somebody then you can look at her means a believer's face, Muslima, is covered as well. Is covered as well. So this is proof that the face is part of mahramiyat and it is forbidden for a stranger to see. Likewise, as Mughira bin Shaaba radiallahu an said, I, I, I once see Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and I told him that uh, there is a female which I want to propose. So Nabi alayhi salam said, idhab fandur ilayha, go and see her because that will be more beneficial. So he said, I went to the parents and I told him that Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said that, فَكَأَنَّهُمَا كَرِيَهَا ذَلِكَ As if they did not like that I see their daughter's face but the daughter who heard that in the background said, In kana Rasulullah amaraka an tandur fandur. Then the Ali of Allah gave permission, then there is permission. So the fact that Sahaba didn't even like a stranger, the fact that Nabi Ali Salam gave ijazat, they allowed it. فَنَذَرْتُ إِلَيْهَا فَتَزَوَّجْتُهَا So I seen her and I married her. So there's so many lessons in, 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 in this whole uh, uh, incident is Sahaba, even a boy who was coming to propose to their daughters could not tolerate the stranger looking at their daughter's face means it was the norm that they were covered and only because Shariat has given gunjaish and leeway based on this necessity. As Asma radiallahu anha's riwayat kunna nughati hujuhana min rijal we used to cover our faces from the men. So the Dalaila lot, wal yadribna bi in these ayat, what do the ulama explain? Alama ibn Hajar Asqalani has mentioned that they should cover their faces. This ayah was referring to covering their faces. So the Delilah a lot, we're not going to get into that, it's a separate topic on its own. But point being, much laxity has crept into the Ummah 
where even people say, no, they're my cousins, I grew up with them, we grew up together. Na'udhu Billah. So females speaking to male cousins, vice versa. Parents allowing school friends and even say that we need to know who your boyfriend is. Bring them home. Bring them home. You allowing your chaste daughter in a position where she would could risk. I, I, I trust my daughter. I trust my son. I trust them. That's why I give them the home keys. That's why I give them the car. I trust them. So this amanat which Allah has trusted what? There's a big breach. Even nowadays the men folk have lost their ghayrat where they put the pictures of their wives on their profiles, their daughters, their mothers. If shariat is saying their faces need to be covered, then why have you exposed it? Some men have, have, have made women instruments like how you buy a car and you show off, you buy a watch and you show off. Their wives are just for show. They need to show off their wives. So uh, if you do not even care about this year, Kullukum Mas'oolun You will have to answer to Allah. The fact that we don't have this ihsas and awareness and the greatness of Allah in our hearts and the darkness of Batil has entered our hearts and we don't have accountability. We will be accountable to the receiver of revenue. We will be accountable for the different bills and then monthly installments. We will be accountable to makhluk. We are worried at all about that. But when it comes to Allah Rabbul Alameen, we are not worried about them. Thalathatun la yanzurullah ilayhim yawm al qiyamah. What severe warnings? Allah will not when a child is disobedient, then the father doesn't want to see the child. Don't come in front of me. Allah will not want to see this person. What the youth, a person who's a cuckold. Another riwayat, Thalathatun, three people Allah has made haram on them, Al-Jannah. A youth, a person who allows other men to derive pleasure from their wives, their daughters. So psychologists call a cuckold a, 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 a variant of masculism. So this, this is like a, a, a man allowing his wife to be adulterous and the wife of an adulteress is called a cuck queen. Where does this cuckold come from? The cuckoo bird where it used to lay its eggs in other birds' nests. So a man allowing his wife infidelity or somebody else to, to gratify themselves, to take pleasure from the discussion. You can allow a strange man to talk to your wife. You can allow your husband to intimately, to, 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 to flirt with other women and you allow it. You, 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 you're selling the chastity, the haya. And when that goes, then slowly, slowly, couples are watching pornography passion increases, desire increases, the shahwat is fed, they become uh, unsatisfied, uh, dissatisfied with each other and they need more. Now we need to go outside the circle. A person who goes out and he does not make hifazat of his eyes, the eyes is a privacy, the eyes shouldn't be for everyone. One is my wife, others looking at her. One is my eyes looking at other people's wives and daughters. This is a serious grave consequence. You taking a picture of yourself with your wife or a woman taking a picture of herself, this is breach of the amanat which Allah has given you. And as long as that picture is on earth, if it was circulated to 10,000 people, 10,000 guna. 
The punishment is multiplied 10,000 times. We cannot understand the gravity of the situation. There was a couple who were HIV positive, they were struggling to survive. They said story, it's a very disruptive story, but based on this point it needs to be mentioned and it is a reality and it is happening in our everyday lives and we need to take it serious. Our wives, our children, our family, Amanat, they are trust in our hands and we are making breach of this trust all the time. This couple from a good family got a background, got married and after time the marriage was normal. They decided to experiment. They got into watching pornography. Pornography is watching a Zania comet Zina. That female is not married to that man. You are firstly watching the act of adultery. Secondly, you are watching somebody sit them. They got restless. It was not enough. They decided to buy adult toys because this is what's promoting bestiality. It's br promoting and breeding a, a animal, a barbaric mindset. Then to, to, to increase the, the, the passion. It doesn't, doesn't end. Like a flame, you feed it little bit wood, it needs more wood. Why? Because the fire is greater. The passion increases. So they decided to buy a camera, film the intimate sessions. Then the wife started filming herself and sending videos of herself to the husband. Then they were still, still not satisfied. So they started fighting and arguing. So the husband said, let's go for holiday on the trip. In the air, a, a plane, they met another Muslim couple who were also going to the same destination. They got close. They were at the same resort. They spent nights together. And when they got close to each other, then the other couple confided to them to say, you know what, we come on holiday to swing, to have threesomes because it is quite safe. We don't want to get caught. And this is the modus operandi. And we've been doing it for the last five years. And the night before they left, they got together and the other wife told her that tonight we're spending some, a night with somebody else. Another male, na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah. This is the wife of somebody, this is the daughter of somebody, this is the mother of somebody. This is the Ummati of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What answer will we give to Allah on the day of Qiyamah? What answer will we give to the Nabi of Allah on the day of Qiyamah? Anyway, they left, they were together on the plane, they exchanged details. And uh, it so happened that the husband was going on business one day and uh, the wife said, you are going on business and uh, um, can I, can I interact with the other lady that we met on holiday? She can come and visit, give me company, agreed. She, uh, she came, the husband got back from business. The wife was very sad, regretful. She said, what happened? She said, we made out. We were watching some videos. Things got out of control. The husband wasn't sure if his wife was a lesbian or not now. He was very fuming, infuriated. She said, you won't do it again. She promised to stop. He happened to go on business again. And... Uh, this time when he came back, the wife was even more sad and depressed and in, 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 in a not a normal mode. And she said that, you know what, the other lady arranged it with another man. And uh, we, the three of us together, had a relationship with a stranger. And uh, the husband became very upset. And uh, they decided this is enough. And, and, and we need to preserve our deen. And what if this is, and they videoed it as well. And if the video had to go out, what would happen, etc. I'm just summarizing the story times up, but um, they decided let's just start a clean slate and they were getting very sickly and they did do blood tests and they were HIV positive. So the situation is quite serious in the Ummah. We need to, we need to take our deen serious. We need to take Qabr and Hashar serious. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one and all. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.